Hello world, it's Unity time, so it's a bit of a change of pace from my usual videos. It's bye bye to Flash for now at least, and um, this isn't going to be a, a, a massive series anyway, uh, for one very good reason, and that reason is this website, unity3d.com forward slash learn is full of awesome stuff anyway. Uh, so if you go there and look at their tutorials, they cover pretty much everything you're ever going to need to know, and anything they don't cover is... Um, sorted by the community. There will be someone out there who's had your problem and there'll be a fix for it on the community section of this, this website. But once you're up and running, jump to this and anything you want to cover is, is in these topics somewhere. They also update them every time units is updated and the production values are really good and I just, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Use them. I just want a few videos of my own out there so I've got a starting point for some students um, and I'm going to make a couple of games anyway. Two games that we're going to make, we're going to do a 2D and a 3D, fairly similar to two of Unity's as well, so uh, we could use them as a reference, uh, but let's let's get to that point later. Let's start a new project. So this is Unity, when you first load it up, click New Project. Let's give it a name, so I'm going to call it First Unity. Choose um, a location for it, I'm happy enough with that, and make sure it's 3D. So we're going to start in 3D, and we'll do 2D later on and hit create project. After a second, Unity, Unity will fire up with a blank project. Uh, mine will look a bit different to yours at the moment because I've got a slightly different layout. I've just customized it a bit. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Yours will look like the wide selection from this layout menu. But if you ever want to change it, if I want to use one of the samples or load up something you've saved yourself, just click on this layout drop down in the top right and choose wide, for example. So this is probably how yours looks. If you're working at college, you'll have a much darker setup because we're on the super expensive professional version. I don't have that sort of money floating about at home. So uh, yeah, it looks different. Straight away, you'll notice that most of your screen is dominated by this scene view. And this is where you piece together your level. So it's a very intuitive drag and drop kind of level design system that we'll make a bit of use of later on. Down at the bottom, you've got the hierarchy, which is a, a list of all the objects in your scene. And we've got the project panel, which is currently empty, but that's all the assets you've imported from outside of Unity. And this is somewhere you should organize stuff properly. So you might have folders for your models, your textures and materials, your sound effects. And then most importantly for this particular video series, our code. So we're gonna have lots of code files need to be organized well so we'll have a folder for them particularly important if you're working in a team so make sure everyone's organized and you know where their assets are going and finally we've got the inspector over here on the right hand side which is currently empty but this is a very important part of the interface that we're going to use quite heavily so i'm going to jump back to the scene view some some quick basics we can rotate around by holding the alt key and left mouse to rotate the view so we get a nice look around we can see the default skybox there you can see we've got this light object and we've got a camera we can move the view by holding the middle mouse and dragging so middle mouse button drag around and we can zoom in and out by rolling the middle mouse various other ways of <coughs> sorry various other ways of controlling it we can choose different um, view um, view kind of perspectives over here by clicking on one of the axes. So there I'm looking straight down the X axis, top down in the Y or from the front in the Z. We can flick between orthographic and perspective cameras as well, which won't really make uh, much difference to this until we have some objects in there. Um, and you can also use this grab tool, which is what the middle mouse changes to when you hold it in. But if you just want to use it with the left mouse, you can actually take the grab tool away. That's enough about movement, let's actually get something worthwhile in here. So I'm going to make a new game object and we're going to use Unity's primitive shapes for now. We're not going to bring any complicated models or anything like that. So we're going to go to the top, choose game object, 3D object, and we're going to make a cube. Notice that a cube is spawned in the world and it's added to the hierarchy. Now this cube isn't quite centralized and that's because I've moved the camera around. So it's, it's trying to center it based on where we're looking, uh, which 
with the cube selected, if you click on the cube, you'll notice that the inspector panel updates and we've got all sorts of information now. And the top chunk of that tells us where our cube is located. And we can actually move it around in a bunch of ways. We can change these values. So we can change the X by dragging on the actual letter X or by typing a number. And you'll see that straight away in the scene view, we get a real time update on that cube's position. Change the Y, which is up and down. Some environments have Y and Z flipped. Um, but Unity's got it, what I would say is the right way. So Z is forward and backwards, Y is up and down. To reset all of that, we can type zeros in there. So we could actually put zero, tab, zero, tab, zero. Or if we wanted to do it quickly, we could click on this cog and choose reset. And that will reset the transform. So it'll put all the scales back to one, all the rotations back to zero, and the position back to the origin at zero, zero, zero. So far, so good. What's important to know about this is that Unity makes use of a component system. And a component is a little object that has a certain set of behaviors and properties associated with it. And we combine them in various different ways to get different effects in our game. So we start with basic game objects. So this, this cube started life as a game object that just had this transform component. So it was just a, an echo of an idea that you could locate somewhere. But by adding this mesh filter with the actual cube geometry, by adding a mesh renderer to that, we get a visual representation of a 3D object. We can actually see something. If I disable the mesh renderer by clicking this tick, we can see that the, the uh, cube disappears because without a rendering component, we don't see anything. There's nothing rendered when there's no rendering component. Some, uh, some objects, for example, the camera, won't need a renderer because the camera doesn't have its own visual elements. It's purely a way of seeing the other ones. So the camera's got very different components, which ultimately leads to having a very, having a very different behavior. We're going to flick back to the cube, but notice because I've disabled the mesh renderer, it's a bit hard to find. And this is where the hierarchy can be quite useful. So we can click on the cube to select it from the hierarchy. We can also, with our mouse over the scene view, press the F key to frame that object. So my, my view will zoom right into that cube. Let's re-enable that mesh renderer. And so far, so good. So we've got this 3D object. We've had a little look at components. We know we can edit them slightly, so we could rotate it in the x-axis by dragging that. Um, but I don't want to. I'm going to reset that or undo it. And the one component that I haven't really mentioned there is the box collider. The box collider gives it its physical shape. So in terms of the physics engine, Unity's got a very powerful physics engine, your 3D meshes will need colliders if they're going to affect physical objects. So in this case, our cube has got a box collider. There's various other colliders available. Um, most of the primitive shapes come with a suitably applied collider for their shape. So a sphere has a sphere collider and so on. And you can disable it if you need to. If this is purely a visual element and you don't want objects to bounce off it or you don't want it to be affected by um, any of the physics later on, you can disable that. So far so good. Keep saying that. Let's hit the play button at the top. So that's the one button we haven't really, or one important button we've not looked at. So we'll click it. You'll notice that the scene view disappears and we flick to the game view. And this is what your game looks like while it's running. So this game is actually running now. And what's good about Unity is that while it is running, you can still go back to the scene and make changes. So I could click on this cube, and I could press E to switch to the rotation tab, and I could um, rotate it and see that instantly applied in my game. If I grab the game tab and maybe drag it to the side here so it gets its own space, we can actually see them both side by side, which is how my view started when Unity loaded up. And now we can see the game update in real time as we affect the cube. And what's quite handy about this, sometimes it can be quite annoying, but in for the most part it's good, is that when we stop playing the game, changes are reset. So it's quite useful for testing things out. While your game is running, you can make changes to stuff and see their effect. And then when you stop running the game, they're reset, just in case you didn't like them. So it's good for trialing stuff. You might have noticed that the cube didn't fall. 
currently it's not actually being affected by Unity's physics engine. And to do that, we need to add a component to it. So we're going to add some extra behavior, some extra complexity in the form of a rigid body component. And that's going to become very important later on. So I'm going to make sure the cube's selected, click Add Component, and find the rigid body, either by going to Physics and clicking Rigid Body, or by typing, or starting to type, Rigid Body. Select it. That will add this new component, this rigid body component, to our cube. And now when we test the game, the cube falls. So it's now been affected by gravity. Notice it's fallen away and it's become a bit irrelevant to the game. So let's throw an object in there for it to land on. I'm going to go to the top, choose Game Object, create a 3D object and make a plane. So I've got this new plane in the scene. Um, it's currently chopping through our cube, which we don't want. So we could either move the cube up or the plane down or both. Let's start by moving the plane. So I'm going to make sure the plane selected up to the movement tool and just grab that y-axis handle and drag it down a little bit. Hit play this time and you'll see that the box, the cube, falls and stops on that plane. And that's because this plane object has a mesh collider component. So while it doesn't have a, a, a rigid body, it's not affected by gravity, it still has a physical presence so that other physics objects can hit into it. If we disable that, so it has no collider, the box will once again fall to infinity. So let's keep that one. Last little bit for this video um, is just a note on parenting in the, the hierarchy. So as you might be familiar with in other bits of software, we can um, parent objects to others so that they kind of group together, or one's responsible for the others underneath it. I'm just going to... Um, Start my game back here because I don't really want them separate anymore. Get a bit of space. And I'm going to add another object. So I'm going to go game object, 3D object, and I'm going to make a sphere this time just to mix it up slightly. And it's positioned it right inside my other cube. Um, so I'm going to drag it down slightly just so it's protruding out of the bottom of that cube. Rotate around so we can see it. Yeah, so that's a fairly intricate combined shape. And if we test it at the moment, it's not going to do what I've set it up to do just yet. See how the cube just rests on top or actually snaps out of it. The physics system has said, has detected that the, this rigid body is inside another collider and it's just shoved it out of it. What I actually want to do is combine these two objects into one. So I'm going to take my sphere in the hierarchy, I'm going to grab hold of it and I'm going to drop it into the cube. So it now becomes a child of the cube. And when I've got the cube selected, and I move it, the sphere will go with it. It's also affected by the physics system now because it's it's a child of the cube and the cube has a rigid body. So it will now be treated as one physics object and it drops perfectly onto its pivot so it doesn't fall over. That really should have dropped. If it was real world physics, it probably would have rolled. So let's give it a slight bit of rotation just so that when it lands, it falls over. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got slightly more realistic physics. That's really it for now. Um, I'm going to keep them quite brief, these videos. We'll probably jump into some code very quickly in the next one. So I'll see you there.